So one question we get asked frequently by all kinds of investors is how much of their money should be invested in stocks? We like the idea of higher expected returns, but we know that the risk associated with stocks is higher. The question about how much of our portfolio to have in stocks can be a complicated one to answer because there's more than one reasonable answer for every investor. And each investor has their own unique circumstances and preferences. For most people, though, the answer is something less than 100% of their investable assets. A quick look at stock markets so far this year gives an indication of why not 100%. If you had a planned expense at the end of last week and you'd invested the money set aside for this expense in stocks, well, uh, for every $10,000 set aside, you might only have eight to $9,000 left given the performance of US and foreign stocks so far in 2022. Most of us know that an expense in the next six to nine months, stocks may not be the best answer as a short-term savings vehicle. The reason is stocks can go up in value, but they can also go down a lot. So stocks and even bonds may not always work as short-term savings vehicles. This line of thinking, though, can help us answer the question, how much should not be in stocks in our portfolio? Rather than starting with the question of how much should be invested in stocks, it's often easier to figure out how much should be in things other than stocks, including cash, short-term bonds, and intermediate-term bonds. So how can you go about answering the question, how much not in stocks? Well, one way is to look at how long stocks can be off their high point. The basic rule of success in investing is to buy low and sell high. This chart shows three assets, classes, and maps their times when they've been in their off their most recent high, something called a drawdown. How far down can they go and how long do they stay off that high? Pretty easy to see that stocks, the purple line, can be off their highs for years at a time and by a very large amount. Bonds in orange have been far less volatile than stocks and short-term government bonds, well, even less so, pretty much holding their value. So how does this help answer our question, how much should not be in stocks? Well, here's what we found to be a very helpful way to think about that. I need you to just hang with me for a few seconds while we do some math. We're going to use a very simplified version of what insurance companies and pensions call asset liability matching. The idea is simply to match an asset with a cash flow or an expense in a way that the asset needed is not underwater when you need to spend the money. So how much money will you need for your portfolio, including your bank accounts in the next 18 months? Okay, allocate that dollar amount to cash like money market. How much money might you need for your portfolio starting 18 months from today and extending to 36 months? Well, allocate that money to short-term bonds. How much money will you need for your portfolio from the end of three years from now through eight years from now? I know it's a long way out there, but you consider allocating that dollar amount to a broad bond market portfolio. After calculating the dollars that probably should not be in stocks, subtract that number from the total amount you have to invest. This would include your 401k, your IRAs, after-tax investments, and bank accounts. These are all part of your total portfolio. That difference between the total available and the amounts you just calculated as dollars not to be in stocks represents the amount that could be in stocks. Could be in global stocks is really an important caveat. Investors need a financial plan that helps them understand just how much return they need to meet their goals at a minimum. They also need to understand just how much price volatility in their investments they can stand. There's a balance there. If the goals are too aggressive, investors can end up in portfolios that create too much anxiety. And anxiety is not only uncomfortable, it can lead to bad decisions, like selling when things are very low. Oftentimes, an investor working with an advisor is figuring out the balance between pursuing higher long-term expected returns, their goals and the time frame for those goals, and something you could call the sleep factor. You know, risk and return are related. So in answering the question, how much in stocks, Remember, with the long-term higher expected returns comes higher risk and volatility. A portfolio you can live with should balance the question, how much do I need in stocks, with the equally important question of how much should not be in stocks. 